which one is closest to your heart? This one or that one? Because that one gives me that Tony Stark feels, man. I think this is what I saw, right, first. And there was no battery pack even back then and even today that is capable of putting out that kind of power. Sagar, this is seven years of development from the earliest battery packs to, um, you know, back in 2016. I think this is what I saw, right, first? Yes, this is what you saw first in uh, MMRT? the MMRT in 2019. So these were the swappable yes, batteries? Yes, these were the removable uh, modular batteries. So uh, when was this? So this was way back in 2016 where... 2016? Yes, this itself was cutting edge because if you look at modular batteries globally, uh, there were a few companies that had tried it back then as, as well. Uh -huh. But we found that there was no battery pack. Uh, for example, each of these were capable of putting out 10 kilowatts of peak power, right? So there's a one and a half kilowatt hour battery pack, each of these. Wow. Um, but capable of putting out 10 kilowatts of peak power. And there was no battery pack even back then and even today that is capable of putting out that kind of power density, right? So managing Crazy. the thermals was a pretty big deal back then. And from there, you know, several iterations later. I like how it's becoming slimmer yes. and slimmer. And more energy dense and more power dense and the thermals and the safety elements coming in to getting to this point where we were talking about, you know, 30 kilowatts, 40 bhp, uh, that kind of power being capable from these batteries, right? So this is what you wrote at MMRT. Um, and all of these three batteries operating simultaneously to pr produce that kind of peak power, right? From there, we went into the pandemic. Mm. So this is the pandemic kind of uh, development that had to happen. And we were like, if we have to maximize range, what are we going to do? So these were the same cells that came in from the modular batteries. The modules went inside these, inside this larger pack. Um, and essentially what we also realized that we were trying to aim for a range of 200 kilometers back then, mm. right? This was about 130 to 150 kilometers, trying to get to 200 and then we went all out in terms of packing and energy. And uh, we reached 300 kilometers there, mm. but we'll come to that in a bit, right? Um, in terms of range, when I say IDC range, in terms of yep. capacity, all of that, right? Um, but essentially, the transition from modular to fixed was a big, big architecture change. The mm -hmm. weight also went up because yep. four and a half kilowatt hour to 10 kilowatt hour. And uh, then the switch over happened to again, refine it, make it more sort of refined with 2170 or 2700 for my cells. Right, so, uh, and in all of this, the BMS also kept changing. So today we are on the eighth generation of the battery pack, but on the 14th or 15th generation of the BMS. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. So those two things had to develop in parallel. So for example, the BMS sits here um, on all of these batteries and it was kind of, there were variations that were going on to accommodate uh, faster um, switching or faster turning off in case of short circuit, those kinds of things, right? So safety elements had to come in. So we went from, in those, in the early packs. This must have been a huge jump, right? In terms of BMS as well. Yes. Switching from this to this. Yeah, yeah. Because there, there were actually three battery management systems. Each Correct. for each exactly. of the batteries. And here... To have all that firepower yes. as one unit. So think about it, right? So these batteries today are capable of, you know, 30 to 50 kilowatt, 60 kilowatt of peak power. So that's 40 bhp to 80 bhp kind yeah. of power. And for the current requirements, right? You have to have a BMS where the components, frankly, are not readily or easily available. So we had to figure out how to sort of make it operate in a super safe manner, right? And uh, that's the kind of iterations that happened every single time. So for example, we'd say for a particular peak power that the bike is delivering, what is an acceptable increase in temperature of the BMS, of the MOSFETs inside, of the cells, and those were things that we had to quantify. And so that actually the, that loop, frankly, from there, from that first battery pack till here, there's frankly no equivalent yeah. uh, in the market. And I think for us, it's been quite an interesting journey building out something that no one else has built before. There are no benchmarks. So for me, the question for you, which is right. possibly the hardest question, which one is closest to your heart? This one or that one? Because that one gives me that Tony Stark feels, man. Right. Remember like in the cave, he's, and which was of course like 
No. <laughs> so beyond. Right. I mean, there's so many leaps here. So yeah. for you, like, what do you think? What do you think was perhaps the most challenging and also that's why the most rewarding or now you are, I mean, I'm not putting words in your mouth. What? Right. No, I think for us, the reason why we've retained all of these, it is sort of to, to remind us of where we were and yeah. what the challenge was at each stage. So we retained all of these things. So companies tend to scrap most mm -hmm. of the older prototypes or things like that. For us, that is a... Sort of, we want to create a museum someday with where it all started. And for us, that is just as important as this because without that, you won't get here. Yeah. Right. Um, so to be able to say, I'll do 10 kilowatt from a one and a half kilowatt hour pack is, is back then also is a challenge, even today is a challenge. Right? So we are very proud of each thing. And I can think of the limitations that the constraints that we, that we encountered in each of these and how we overcome, overcame those. And, it's been quite a journey.